Hello everybody, so today's video is just like a remake of one of my videos. I think I I should be able to combine both videos together because the first video was pretty bad, honestly. Like it was a story time, but yet it was like all jumbled up. So that video is actually the should I go to sec 5 video and this I mean for me it's been two years since I graduated from sec 5 but I guess you know sharing my experience would be a anniversary to that age of me so like I thought maybe I should just make a sec 5 video again so first things first to introduce myself, I'm Sui and I was a SEC 5 student in, in 2021 to get into Polytechnic. So currently, I am studying early childhood and yeah, that's all I'm gonna give you. And uh, so starting off, you might be asking, should I really, really come back to SEC 5? My answer is after going through like all the result releases and everything, to be very honest, frank with you it's not very it's not very like scary as per se like i guess like a lot of teachers usually when they say don't come back to set five because you can't do this can't do that they are not wrong it's just that it depends on whether or not your foundation in sec four is good enough so that you can come back so that you won't be studying so much but to be very frank it depends on your ability to do the subjects so like to start for me at least i only have the sec 5 uh experience and i said it in my previous video so i actually didn't have i didn't really say in detail but i didn't have a very good foundation of math and sciences yeah those two are the subjects that i didn't have a good foundation of so when i came back to sec 5 it was like a roller coaster basically so like one day I'm good in math, the next day I may get like a 49 or something. So it really depends on your abilities and like if you genuinely don't like studying and genuinely not enjoy it, I would suggest you go to DPP if possible because I've heard of friends that couldn't even get into DPP. So yeah. so. Just to summarize the different uh, routes that you can take. If I remember, it was seven routes. One, it's DPP. Second one, PFP. Third one, SEC 5. Fourth one, NFP, which is the NAFA Foundation Program. Fifth one, which is just retaking N levels. Sixth one, going to a private institution to do your private diploma. Seven is actually going to IT to take your NITEC course. The four, the two-year NITEC course and then two-year high NITEC course. So like, these are all the options you can choose. There are not many, but you can choose. And then you might be, you might be wondering like, how is my SEC5 life? So like, I've said it in my previous video, the first video that I've made for SEC5, but how was I was basically my mental state was pretty much out of the moon and when I say out of the moon I mean like it was not that great at that point because one I was very devastated that I couldn't get into PFP because I came back with 13 points and level points second I treated it as though it was the end of the world and that if I don't do well in all levels that I would be a failure now that I think back when I talk about O levels in the past, I would just ball out crying because that's how I felt during the process. And I think a lot of people have those thoughts before. Just know that there are people out there that aren't that are like you and feeling all these feelings. But to cope them, I would really recommend. Please don't just stay in your room every single day, 365 days a year, just to study for O-levels. You have, you have to have those days where you have to get out of the house, where you really just 
let go of everything and relax. That will be better because I did not do that and I wouldn't want anyone to walk in my footsteps and be stressed, be burnt out. Because the after effects of O levels was that I felt as though I was very empty. It's not even consistent. It was like, I need to rush this, I need to rush that. So when it reached the point where I couldn't handle it anymore and that I should be turning on my engines, I burned out and I started to forget a lot of things, daily essential things that I have to bring to school, the different subjects, the topics that I have to do. I literally forget some of the stuff that I've learned and like honestly speaking that's even more scarier. So like I had memory loss and like my parents they were really um, worried for me because they found out that I was having all this memory loss and everything and like don't worry I'm fine right now because like I believe it's due to the mental stress, the mental pressure that I put on myself. Like I said earlier, I came back with 13 points, I placed too much emphasis and that if I don't do well that I'll be a failure, especially for Chinese language because I don't know there's this thought in my brain that had to compare with my relatives and like my cousins and like I really really worked really hard for it and in the end I still got frustrated with the results because I didn't get a B3 which was the standard in my family. Don't put so much emphasis onto just grades. Please take care of your physical and mental health. Really, I, I really regret it and me just giving you wise advice would be like best thing to do right now. And I think I talked about like the like my entire year breakdown and everything. I went for tuition classes on Mondays, Fridays and Sundays. And some of the weeks I went for tuition classes consecutively. So like seven days I go consecutive every single day and it's not during the June holidays, it's not during the March holidays but it's during normal school days. At that time, um, because it was COVID, I didn't have like extracurricular activities after school like what you guys have now. So like I can imagine how much stress that you guys must be feeling right now because I didn't go through that. I went through a lot of tuition classes and if I still remember correctly from like the previous video, I spent at least 42 hours a week on tuition classes and like I can't imagine how it is like right now because from like my secondary school I found out that they have like after school curriculars until 5 p.m. so like when I say curriculars I actually mean um, extra classes till 5 p.m. like can you imagine like some like I can I really can't imagine like how some of you can like withstand till maybe the late night so when is the time that you're gonna be doing your homework? Like, when? All the best to you because I don't know how you're gonna cope but how I coped with it with so many things on my plate was I would usually rush through my school homework. I treated it as a form of practice. Sure, it's still important but like I didn't treat it as though the teacher is gonna scold me because at this point the teacher would not want to scold you. So like at this point, I treated it as like a revision for myself. So when I can't finish it up, I would usually use recess time to finish every single thing or come to school earlier to do it. So like I would recommend you to have like a one day off of during the week if you have it or a few hours off like after school hours, be it after school hours or be it like during the weekends. Really have the time off, I really honestly think that that's very important. Then for me at least, how I coped with the um, the stress was I would usually leave Saturdays empty so I would do all my favorite things on Saturdays and like really I enjoy Saturdays because of that but still the mental stress took over. I just basically, I was just so overwhelmed by all these emotions and I really just, you know, send them away because O levels, right? But please just validate your own emotions and if you feel that it's time to stop for a while, just stop for a while and then come back again later. Then, yeah, this is basically like my, like, 
my own mental health for sec 5 then like when, like I said I had like a mon- a daily breakdown right so like weekdays Monday Friday and Sundays are tuition classes then like the other days of a week is just empty but like I'll use it to do tuition homework school homework revision and usually I don't have time to do revision honestly because I'm doing so much already don't stress yourself when it's time to sleep go to sleep and yeah then like if you're talking about monthly breakdown it will be like the first six months it's preparing for mother tongue exams and I I would say I've not so good in mother tongue I just watched all the dramas Chinese dramas listen not really listen but like listen to like those e-booklets or like audiobooks then I also did Chinese practices every week then I would also watch Chinese news basically just immersing myself in Chi- like the Chinese language and like I'm really not good in Chinese. Till now, it's not very good. But like now it's getting a little bit better. Just, I'm just using like Douyin and like Kuai Shou to like really boost it up. Because I I now understand what they're saying. In the past, I couldn't understand anything. So like, that's how I improved my Chinese. My, the, the Chinese language subject. So just to continue, I'm gonna be leaving the link to the tips down in the description below. But like, yeah, that's basically all of my tips because I can't help you with math and sciences. I was so sucky in those subjects, but like how I improved it was just true tuition. But I still failed math. I think that day when I received my results, it was a D7. And uh, luckily, it didn't affect my admissions to early childhood. But still, it was D7 and really... Um, if you could, like, if you can, please just pull it up to C6. But, yeah, if you're talking, if you want me to talk about the results release day, I would say for my school at least, I don't know about other schools, other schools are different. For my school at least, a lot of people failed English and math for my year, and only 50% of students could go into poly. And, like, I don't blame them because... They didn't have the foundation, a lot of them didn't have the foundation for English back when we were still in school. And like, yeah, I was actually one of the few people that passed English for in my class. So like, it's very heartbreaking to see that some of them weren't able to get into like polytechnic. And it felt very painful that all your hard work has went into vain. So like, honestly speaking, um... If you really can't, like, if you really don't like studying, don't come back. Just go to a tertiary education of your choice, be it NFP, be it DPP. Do not come back to Sec 5, really. It's not worth it if you are not able to catch up and you're not able to do, like, the consistency. That's the key in Sec 5. And, like, if you're talking, if you want me to talk about my poly life right now, I'm in year two right now, so like I can speak for myself for my entire like my entire year one life. But I can tell you when you come into tertiary education, it's not as easy as what other people might say. Like how people when they compare JC with poly junior colleges with polytechnics, they would say that polytechnics are generally easier. But it depends on. But to me at least, it depends on what course you enter. If you're getting into a full-on project-based course, you are gonna see a lot of people getting taken advantage of because back in year one. So like back in year one, I was being taken advantage of like for group projects and like I felt that it was very unfair that when I get an A grade that the other people who didn't do the work get an A grade and it's a problem in everywhere actually like in every school honestly so so the next clip that I was gonna play was going to be a little bit iffy so I decided on re-recording this part because I felt that it was very important to be to like talk about this part a little more so 
to clarify, the part where is very frustrating is is the part where people don't do the work and expects you to do it. So yeah, I really like last semester was a really rough ride, and I don't want anyone. Like I don't want anyone to experience what I experienced in semester two. I'm not ready to share everything yet, and I don't want to hurt the people around me while sharing this. But in general sense, in my opinion and in my experience, semester two of year one was the worst out of everything. I just posted last week the goodbye year one video. Yeah. To clarify, year two, no, year one, sem two was a mess because every group project that I did had a member that didn't contribute at all, like really, it, it, yeah. <laughs> and um, the reason why I get frustrated is because they don't do the work and they expect the grade that they shouldn't have. Which is just me being taken advantage of. That's why I said in the first part, where, um, where I said like I was taken advantage of for one year. Yes, I was taken advantage of for one year, and it's not a very nice experience. Really, it's not a very nice experience. And I don't want to talk about the experience right now because I'm still healing on the inside. But I can just tell you that it isn't. I mean, like everybody's experiences are different. Your experience may be different from mine, and like comparing my experience to my friend's experience, their experiences are way different from mine. So don't just don't just treat my my words as like a grain of salt because this is just my experience. So yeah, let's continue on to the video. Nothing much that I can say about year one life. There is a lot of things that happen in year one that I don't want to disclose, and I don't want to give fame to those people who ruined it for me. But I would say it made me a better person, and I wouldn't change it for anything else. But if you're asking me, how is early childhood like? Um, it's it's been good. <laughs> Just kidding. I actually like it's a pretty fun course to be in. It's definitely one of those fun courses, but it's a very tiring course to be in because every single year you have an attachment uh, with a preschool, and like fear of going to attachment is always there. I don't know what to say. I'm currently waiting for year two attachment in October, but right now I'm just studying. But I can tell you, my course has very tight deadlines, really tight. Like other courses, they have like exams, they have like projects, but their deadlines are like far apart that they can handle. For mine, it's the worst that I had was last semester, where everything was due on January thirty first of this year. I cannot imagine anymore. Like I don't want to go back to that. Era because it was really stressful, and like the stress levels are very high, and I don't want to go back there anymore because I met like every project that I did last semester was a mess, and like it really caused my grades to go downwards. So, poly life can differ from one person to another. My experience doesn't mean that your experience is gonna be bad because. I've heard from friends that their experiences are way better than mine, so take my words as a grain of salt. Just go in, make friends, but do note that some people make friends for, like, FWB, basically friends with benefits. They just want to make friends with you for benefits. But like to be very honest, don't just hear my complaints and think that Poly is such a bad place to go to. It. Isn't a bad place to go to. You, like, to be very honest, just choose what you want and don't just be swayed by what others say. I said this before. Don't be swayed by other people's like choices and don't be swayed by other people's opinions on things. Really, stick to what your heart wants. And if you don't know yet, it's okay. It's not as bad as you think it is. 
please just don't be swayed by my words like just because i say that my year one is so bad doesn't mean that your year one is gonna be bad if you come in here and i know this is like i know this month is like or should i say subsequent months are like eae months but i think the application has already been done but like to be very honest just don't be swayed don't just reject an offer just because i said that you know poly is so bad and everything really it's not that bad i've heard friends who went through poly with a group of friends that they had since year one and really they had the best time in poly so it differs for like each individual anyways Thank you for watching. Goodbye.